the EFPMIC of all brands is equipped with the large bobbin. If the voltage of the bobbin is measured, we'll find that is equal with the battery voltage. This VBAT line extends to all the related circuits. As we have seen at the beginning of this course, it is important to verify the consumption when the device is on standby. To do this, we connect the laboratory power supply and we observe the consumption. If there is consumption in standby, this may indicate a problem with the motherboard. If the device doesn't start when we press the power button and doesn't not consume any current, it is necessary to measure all the boost line to determine which line is failing. If a special cable to turn on Android devices is not available, a cable must be connected to the boost line to supply voltage to the device. This should turn on the device safely. Sometimes the device doesn't turn on with the laboratory power supply due to the fact that batteries contain an identification ID line that communicates with the PMIC Integrate Power Management Unit. This makes the device to identify the battery and to turn on. The bobbin located next to the EFPMIC serves a dual purpose as it serves to charge the battery and also to supply power to the PMIC, Power Management Integrate Circuit. We continue with the repair so we must replace the EFPMIC. Here, in this corner, there is a notch that indicates the exact position of the circuit. This circuit only works correctly when it's placed correctly, so we must take care when replacing it. All circuits have a notch that indicates the pin number 1 of the circuit. To desolder like a professional is necessary to heat the circuit and to apply flux. The use of the flux is crucial to remove all the air under the circuit and maintain a constant temperature during the soldering process. The flux is also essential for a brilliant and quality soldering. On our YouTube channel we have dozens of free videos about the reballing process so you can find many precise repairs. To remove this integrate circuit it's recommended to use the hot air station with 400 Celsius degrees and 30% air flow. However, the temperature can be reduced to 380 Celsius degrees with an air flow of 40% or even lower the temperature to 360 Celsius degrees with the air flow of 50%, depending on the heating station and the temperature of your workshop. I'm very glad that this has happened. We have been able to see that when we removing the component, two capacitors have moved. This can happen over the years, but there is no need to fear. These capacitors can be easily placed. It's only necessary to maintain a temperature of 380-400 Celsius degrees and lower the airflow to 20%. In this way, small capacitor will not move. On some occasion, you can even have repairs in your workshop with more than 20 components moved from other workshops. These are the easiest repairs to carry out since it is only a matter of correctly placing the moved components. To clean the old solder lid is required to use the tip of the soldering at 350 Celsius degrees with 6040 solder wire. Alternatively, 138 Celsius degrees solder paste with a lower melting point can be used. The idea is to remove all the solder lid and to leave the surface clean. 
To can perform this is necessary desoldering wick which is composed of copper wires which helps to remove the old solder lid. If we have a clear surface, the integrate circuit can be soldered with precision. For this, it is essential to clean the surface and follow all the steps carefully. If we want to become a professional in micro soldering of integrate circuit, it's important to follow the procedures orderly and cleanly. Any flux or solder residue can ruin our repair. To remove the excess of flux from the motherboard, we recommend to use a piece of cotton and contact cleaner. Depending on the country, these products are available as PCC15 or WD40. This is the old EFPMIC or charging EC. In this area you can see the black pads. Unfortunately, over time some specific area has been damaged, which has prevented the EC from sending charging current to the battery. This is due to the fact that the pads have been heated excessively. In all charging and voltage management circuits you can find these failures. You can easily earn a good salary by repairing these phones. Right now I'm going to recycle an EFPMIC from a motherboard that I have here in my laboratory. To find out where to get this circuit, we have an account on Mobile One Tech. 